tidings of the kingdom of God, not the tidings of King Charles the Ten of the United Kingdom, but the tidings of the great king, the king that created the heavens and the earth, the king that created you and I, both blue, both black, blue, green, or yellow, or white, that king, that king that saw it fit to have a people of many colors, an earth of many colors and many diversities that will bring glory to him. Today we bring you the gospel, the gospel of the Lord Jesus that many of us have forsaken, the gospel of the Lord Jesus that many of us have neglected. The evidence is clear that in Angola, the many of the churches are empty. They become monuments for pictures and selfies. But friends, the essence of these buildings was to hold the glory of God. And today, in the name of Jesus, we come preaching Jesus, the one who was, who is, and is to come. I spoke to an atheist. He told me he doesn't believe in God. And I asked him a simple question. Do you celebrate Christmas? He said yes. Then I began to understand what the Bible says in Psalm 14. The fool has said in his heart, there is no God. The fool doesn't believe there is God, but yet he celebrates the birth of the Son of God, which is Christmas. And that is the folly of our time. When we neglect the In other words, we'll have eternal life. 
In other words, you will have uncreated life. You see, the life that we have is perishable. It's created. It has a beginning and it has an end. There are diversities of life. The physical life, the psychological life, the spiritual life, and eternal life. But I knew when Jesus said that thief comes to still kill and destroy. But I come that you might have life and life in abundance. You see, God sent his son to give us life in abundance. That we will have physical life, eternal life, psychological life, and spiritual life. Today, friends, I'm here to let you know that Jesus came for the purpose to give men life. Why? Because the wages of our sins has brought death. But Jesus said, I come that you might have life. I saw that. Best illustration I can give to you is four years ago in 2020, men were dying of COVID and men were looking for man's intervention to preserve their lives. Men found a way by having injected to preserve their life. Others found a way by covering their faces with masks to preserve their lives. But you see, all these interventions made by men was not able to save lives. It was able to slow down the processes of death, but it was not able to give you life eternal. You see, we can slow down death, but death is appointed unto all men. We will all die. And it's not an offense to let you know that you all die. But the question is that I should have a life insurance, insurance for your homes, insurance for your cars, because you do know that unforeseen emergencies might come. And so we think insurance life policies to protect us from any event of disaster. But the question that I have for the people of Mandela is that we have life insurance, sky insurance, mobile phone insurance, but we don't have insurance for our souls. We're living in a generation where when one loses his phone, it's as if he has terminated his life. But we do not care about the status of our soul. And so today I come preaching this gospel to give you eternal life. I'm selling no religion. I come not to give you a religion, but I come that you might have life through Jesus Christ. Because the wages of sin is death, but God's gift is a gift of eternal life. God's gift to humanity was a gift of eternal life. And he showed that gift by making Jesus lay down his life to pay the death of our sin that is taking away the life of men. And today in the name of Jesus, we sound this trumpet because Jesus is coming again. He will not come like a baby in an angel so you can celebrate another Christmas with Christmas gift and Christmas lights. And friends, He will not come like one that was nailed to the cross again so you can pervert it with your pagan distribution of Easter bunny eggs. Friends, you can eat Easter bunny eggs and it won't give you life. It might pacify your desires and your edges for the things of the flesh. But when it comes to pacifying the wrath of God that is directed towards every sinner, it cannot pacify it. You see, we cannot buy eternity with money. We cannot buy eternity with power standards. We cannot buy eternity with our political position. We cannot buy eternity with our wealth. We cannot buy eternity. But I've come to realize that many are here and say, if God is so good, what are bad things happening to good people? We ask these questions there. We wonder that the God that is so good, He's allowed bad things to happen to good people. But I've come to know this, that the God that is so good is so patient, that He created a hell for those who do bad things to good people. Just as our government cannot stop crimes, but he's created a system so that people who commit offense to citizens of this land are sent to prison. So is God so good that he created a system called heaven and hell that those who do bad things to good people will end up going to hell. Love dancing with the devil the national team, burning and rolling in the lake of fire. God is good because he's a just God. God is good and he's holy. But the question that I have and it's been troubling me is that if God is so good, why is he justifying the wicked? You see, God has allowed both the good and the bad to dwell together. You see, there is a time appointed unto all men 
The Bible says it's appointed unto man who wants to live and after that judgment. Judgment is appointed, my friend. But one day stand before God and make account for our deeds of the flesh. Whether your flesh was a white flesh, black flesh, you all stand before an anti-rational church who is not biased by the colors of our skin, who is not biased by the amount of money we have in our account. The Bible says that there was a great white true judgment, and before whom the heaven and the earth did flee, there was one that sat upon the throne and books were opened. The Bible says both the great and the small stood before him. They were judged according to what was written in the books. Friend, there is a book about you, my friend. There is a book about me. But there was a particular book. And that book was a book of life. You see, friends, it's not a book of people who have money. It's not a book of people who have done good deeds. But it's a book of life. I began to ask myself this question. The Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his son that whosoever believes in him will have eternal life. I began to realize that the eternal life is a name written in the book of life. You see, you might have a religion, but not eternal life. You see, the Jews had a religion. They had a custom. They had a tradition. But they did not have eternal life. You see, the Bible says, you do not know the truth. Because those who know the truth, they testify about me. You seek eternal life, but those who have eternal life, they testify. You see, there are many of us who claim we are Christians, but when it comes to testifying about Jesus, we deplore our political correctness to hide the evidence of Christ who has made us Christians. And you see, we are ashamed of Jesus, but we forget that Jesus was not ashamed to lay down his life for humanity. He was stripped for humanity. He was proved for our transgression. He was, he was stricken for our, for our sins. The Bible says the chastisement of our peace, we cannot be bought in Tesco. The chastisement of our peace, we cannot be found in the UN. The chastisement in our peace, that cannot be found in Beckenham Palace, or Windsor Castle, or all the castles there is in Wales. The, the, the chastisement of your peace cannot be found in Carnarvon where the King Charles III was coronated. You see, the peace of God surpasses all understandings and the inventions and the technologies of men. It surpasses that you can find in weed, cocaine and heroin. It cannot give you peace. And I came to realize that money cannot buy peace or else there will be peace in Israel and Palestine. We go around screaming free Palestine but we don't want to be free from sin. You see, you might, Palestine can be free from Israel, but they can never be free from sin. You see, sin is the reason why we have many problems on the earth. You see, we don't have a racial matter. People are going up about, screaming, get out of our country. They scream, they make a racial slurs. But you see, screaming and kicking our people away doesn't give peace. Peace is found in Jesus. And the Bible says, for God so loved the world that he sent his son to give us eternal life. You see, we can have a peaceful economy, a fruitful economy. We can have all these things, but if we ourselves are not changed from the inside, things will never change. I've come to realize that the richest man on the earth probably has over 400 billion dollars. And the only 7 billion people on the earth if that rich man gave anyone one billion pounds or one billion dollars just to eradicate poverty, I mean one man that is rich on the earth has the power to eradicate poverty in Africa. But you see, the rich keep on getting richer and the poor keep on getting poor. But we have a king in heaven. He lived his glory about us. Made his abode with sinful men, with poor men. You see, all other religious men did not make their bones with simple men, laid down his life for simple men. There is a king that transcends it, that transcends King Charles the Ten. King Charles will not lay down his life, be stripped naked, nailed to the cross, shed his blood for your sins. Buddha, Krishna, Muhammad cannot do that. Baal cannot do that. Confucius cannot do that. But Jesus, the King of Glory, the one who was and is to come, laid down his life. He laid down his life that we might have eternal peace. We might have eternal peace. We might have eternal peace. Eternal forgiveness. Eternal 
redemption. A redemption that you can take into the afterlife. You see, there are many things we can't take to the afterlife. We will die and leave our money, but we cannot die and leave eternal life. Eternal life is what we take into the afterlife. It is an eternal life that gives us the privileges to inherit the things that pertain to the kingdom of God. You see, friends have come to realize that though I was born in the United Kingdom in North London, I could never be a child of King Charles X. My best rights does not give me access to the throne. But the moment I became born again, Jesus said you must be born again or you cannot enter the kingdom of heaven. You cannot see the kingdom of God. And for those who are atheists today, who struggle with the reality of an invisible God, who throws in even quarter for life, whereby they use the scientific parameters to comprehend an eternal multi-dimensional God. But I fully use the parameters of man to know the creator of the heavens and the earth. Science has still not found out how the earth came about. They explain it by an evolutionary theory. By a big bang theory. And still we cannot fathom it. We made it more complex. But you see, God becomes a man. He comes and becomes a human being. A God man. They call him the son of God. The Muslim will say God cannot give birth. You see, that is how I knew that the God of the Muslim and the God of the Christians or the Jews are not the same. Because in the Quran 121 verse 3, it says Allah cannot be dead, nor is he begotten. But when I read the Bible, John 3 16, it says Yahweh begot his only begotten son and gave us his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish, but have an everlasting life. And so my religious mindset, we believe we all serve the same God. If we all serve the same God, then there will not be problem in Palestine. Because it's an Islamic war and a Christian war. And the Bible says these religions, they transcend religions, platforms. It's a kingdom against another kingdom. The Bible says Jesus said in the last days, nation will rise against nations. And that is why they are racism. Because a nation is rising against nations. And the evidence of racism is of nation rising against nation is racism. But the evidence of kingdom rising against kingdom is the evidence of religious wars. Because religion is a kingdom. It colonizes the minds of men, but it brings them into another reality called the mind of God. And so religion is not the mind of man's supremacy, but it's the mindset of God ruling over the hearts and the minds of men in order to make itself visible to human flesh. And so religion is not just going to church. Religion is the religion of the God in you. And that is why Jesus came that he might dwell in our hearts. You see, religion will change the outward appearance of the man, but the gospel of the Lord Jesus will change the heart of the man. It doesn't change the coat of the man. It changes the heart of the man. Today, I'm, like, I'm breaking down these things so you understand the essence of the preaching of this gospel. Jesus says, Go ye therefore to the four corners of the earth and preach this gospel and disciple nations. Nations have not been discipled unto Jesus, they've been discipled unto religion. There is a difference between being discipled into a religion and being discipled unto Jesus. We make disciples of Christ. No Buddha, no Krishna, no Muhammad, no Baha, which have all shown of the glory of God and are all sinful men. But Jesus was without sin. The Bible says he knew no sin. But yet because he loved us, because he desired that we will not perish in hell, he became a man to pay the debt of our sins. So that by us believing in him, we can be born into that family line that is sinless. So that we will not be confronted with the judgment of God and with the wrath of God. You see, that is why Jesus spoke to the Jewish man. And he came to him and he said, Jesus, no one can do this thing that you do except God be with him. But he forgot that Jesus' name originally, by the annunciation of the angel, is that his name shall be called Emmanuel, God with us. And so the Jew realizes this Jesus is peculiar. He's not like the religious Pharisees, the teachers of the law and the prophets. But this one, that was 
resuscitated God in the flesh. And he said, Jesus, the things that you do, no one can do except God be with him. He was a Jew. Well taught in the ways of Moses. Well taught in the Torah, the Tanakh, and the Ketuvim. But yet he did not have life. Yet he could not have access to the kingdom of God. He was in the kingdom of Israel. And Jesus did not come preaching a Jewish kingdom. But he preached a higher kingdom, which was the kingdom of God. And so some of us being free Israel. But see, Israel cannot be free until he repents and come back to Yahweh. Today is a day of salvation. The Bible says, therefore, Jesus speak to this Jewish man, the ruler in the synagogue, the man who was following the ways of Moses. And he said, except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. Today I come telling the same people of Wales, except you be born again, not as a Welsh, but as a citizen of the kingdom, not as a white man or a black man, but as a citizen of the kingdom, you cannot enter, you cannot see, and you cannot inherit. There is a sight, and there is an access, and there is an inheritance that is attached to this message. You see, we inherit life, and we inherit the treasures of the heavenly kingdom of God. And today, in the name of Jesus, you must be born again. Then I understood. I'm born in the United Kingdom, but I'm not a child of the royal family. You see, when we became born again, and I became born again, the Bible says, as many as believe in Jesus, He gave them power to become sons of the living God. Your religion gives you power to be religious, to be condemning and judgmental. But when you become born of God, except you be born again, you cannot enter the kingdom. Except you be born again, Jesus said, you cannot see the kingdom. And this is my message to every atheist. You want to see God, you must be born again. Then you will see the kingdom and the king of kings who dwells in their approachable lives. Today is a day of salvation. The Bible says God did not send his son into the world to condemn the world, but that the world through him might be saved. Through him, not through his son, not through Hinduism. But through Jesus, they will be saved. But what are we being saved from? Are we being saved from born from a bomb approaching England? Are we being saved from poverty? No, we're being saved from sin. Because all we like sheep are gone astray. The Bible says we are all come short of the glory of God because of the nature of sin. There is something I inherited from my mother and my father when they left me, when I was conceived in the womb of my mother and I was four for nine months. I inherited the DNA of sin. It was cancerous. It's generation. It spreads like cancer. Sin is what you're born in. A child is born with sin. Not knowing sin. Before a child even starts sinning and you have the propensities or the propensity to sin, it's because they carry in them the DNA of sin. Today we find Genesis that have found a way to change our DNA pattern in order to fight coronavirus. But you see, when we become born again, God gives us a new DNA that fights the tendency to kill, to steal, to lie. It fights the tendency to kill and to exploit and to become racist, to become liars, people powers, rapists, extortioners, liars who are higher dimension. There is something about the gospel that when you believe in God, it changes your DNA. You see, religion cannot change your DNA. Religion will give you a religious identity and a membership. The religion pattern will give you a clothes. You dress like a Muslim. You dress like a Jew. But your heart is dying, not knowing God. Therefore, we're living in a generation who are in wills who said, I was born in the church, raised in the church, confirmed in the church, baptized in the church. But yet, I did not meet God. All I saw was hypocrites in our cathedrals. And because I saw hypocrites, God doesn't exist. That is not good enough. Because Jesus, who was invisible, was made visible. The directive and the pattern and the model is not man. The model is Jesus. The question is, have you met Jesus? Many say, I went to church. I've been to church. I've given to the poor. And I asked him, have you been to Jesus? Have you met Jesus? Because if you meet him, you will not have a problem with men. If you meet him, you will not lose your Christianity. You will not lose Jesus. Those who have met him will face persecution. You see, those who are Muslim can die 
for the religion. I see these men to hell. They die to have ten virgins in the afterlife. You see, we die for things that are perishable. Because in the, in the afterlife, they are not male and females, they are just spirits. And so when we're told that we will die by throwing up males who we'll have ten virgins, the Allah will honor us with virgins, while there are no spirits, spiritual women and spiritual men in heaven. But all men are like angels. There is a spirit and a man, it's a spirit of the Almighty. And today, in the name of God, the Bible says, Be born again. The Bible says, Those that are born of the Spirit are born. The Bible says, Them that are led by the Spirit are the sons of God. The Bible says, Those that have received Jesus, they have received power to become sons of God. I chose to become a son of God. I didn't just choose to become a citizen or a member of a religious circle, but I chose to be a son of God. I preach this gospel because it's my birthright. You see, King Charles X and Prince William are the Lord birthright. They go around dominating and spreading the message of the monarchy. You see, Christianity transcends religion. It is the identification of those who are citizens of the kingdom. An American can be from, from, from Ohio or from California, but before the made of 54 states, they decided to call him one and I'm here to let you know there is a king and he's coming again. The king is coming. He will not come to die for sins. He will not come to be laid down on the cross. You see, many of you wear crosses by your liars, your thieves. You wear crosses like a pope, but you smoke, you drink, you smoke coke. You do all those evil things. Go to the extent of even raping women. You go to the extent of of stealing, lying, and you're a hypocrite and a liar and a racist, but yet you claim a religious position and standpoint. And the Bible says, Do not be deceived, for the righteous shall not inherit the kingdom of God. Today, it is a day of salvation. And just ask Jesus when about Calvary, Capernaum, preaching the gospel of the kingdom, telling all men, Repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today, the people of London are repentance repentance unto life and not a repentance unto a religion you see many of us have stopped drinking stopped smoking but we have not received the life of god we have just stopped drinking stopped smoking and we're going to church we have repented unto religion you see there is a repentance unto life and a repentance unto a religion either you become a muslim a hindu a buddhist or one of these religious sects or you receive a repentance from the life. Because for God so loved the one that he sent his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him will not perish but have everlasting life. I'm repentant to receive eternal life. I cannot identify with religion anymore because I can only identify with the life of God that created all lives. Today is a day of salvation. Repent and receive everlasting life. Repent that your sin be forgiven, repent that your sick will be blotted out and you receive moments of refreshing from the presence of the Lord. Repent because Jesus is coming again with thousands of his angels with flaming fire, taking vengeance upon all those who do not know God. And you will obey the gospel, the commandments of his gospel. The question is, what is the gospel? You see, today we perverted the gospel and the church of England have decided to change church to community. But Jesus said, I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. And if they change the church, it becomes the church of or the, 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 England, the community of England, then the hell will prevail. Sin will prevail. And that is why we will endorse the alphabet community. We will endorse abortion and we will endorse pedophilia. We will endorse experiencing, we will endorse homosexuality. Because in that community, it allows and tolerates the, the evidence and the acts of sin. But God will judge all sinners. God will judge sin. There is a saying the Americans usually say, God loves the sinner, but hates the sin. But you see, one day God will judge both the sinner and the sins in the lake of fire. And so we can lie that God loves me as a sinner. He loves me the way I am. 
But Jesus did not come to die to keep you the way you were. He came to die to kill sin, to turn you to a righteous man. He came, he came to die to change you to the image of the likeness of the devil and give you a new image. For the Bible says, let us make man in our own image and likeness. You see, the image and likeness that we have today is a distorted image and likeness of, 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 of the devil. And so we have a propriety and a tendency to break God's record. You see, we all make mistakes. We all do one, two bad things here and there. But it's not just about making a mistake. Do we understand that we're born with a simple heart? And that the essence of the gospel is to change your mind and your heart so that you begin to live like God. Today is a day of salvation and we're preaching this gospel. We're preaching this gospel so you know why you need Jesus. You see, our nation needs Jesus. It doesn't mean religion. Because you see, if there was a poor approaching Wales right now, people would not be looking for a sick temple, a, a mosque, or a cathedral. You hear people screaming, Oh Jesus! Some will be screaming, Allah, Allah, Allah. You see, people will be calling on their God. They will not be seeking a religion. <laughs> when the bomb is approaching or a plane is about to crash, you hear people screaming and praying and calling on their God. So you realize that I began to understand. The Bible says, Whosoever will call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. You see, religion offers salvation. But Jesus, instead of rap dancing with a devil and national team, Bending and rolling in the lake of fire. Today, friends, he will repent for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. And except we repent, the Bible says, will not go perish. You see, except we turn away from our sins, it is equal to the Jews. Except they repent, we can support the Jews. I have a responsibility not to support them in their folly, but I have a responsibility to support them in prayer. The Bible says, pray for Jerusalem. Blessed are those that pray for Jerusalem. Paul said the other day, my heart desires that Israel will be saved. My heart desires, Lord, is that Palestine will be saved from the nature of sin. They can be free from wars, but not free from sin. And the evidence and the judgment of sin is death. Today, repent from your sins. Repent and call on the name of Jesus. And you shall be saved. Repent from your sins. Call upon Jesus. I met a man that was struggling with drug addiction. He said, Andre, anytime I want to stop, I cannot stop. I've been to AA meetings. I've done all the meetings that hasn't changed my life. The edge of drugs is still in me. I said, Have you met Jesus? Because it's a heart problem. Every addicted person, any person who has addicted to anything, has a heart issue. Their heart has an edge for cocaine. An edge for drugs, an edge for smoking. But see, when God comes, He changes the heart of the man. He will change the heart of the drug addict so they will no longer desire drugs, but they will desire the word of God. The Bible says, as newborn babes, desire the sincere milk of the word. See, the thing that will change us is the word of God. But today, many of us are Christians, but we don't read our Bibles. The Bible says an anathema to men in Wales because they believe that the Bible was written by men. But the Bible says it was not just written by men. It was written by holy men of God who were inspired by the Spirit of God. Just as Harry Potter was written by somebody who was highly inclined in witchcraft, inspired by the Spirit that makes men practice witchcraft, they wrote Harry Potter. They did this movie by the inspiration of another spirit, which is not the spirit of God. It was more than a motivational thing. It was an inspiration from the pits of hell. The word of God was written by the inspiration of God. God inspired me to learn the Welsh language, the English language. He hears the French language. You see, God is a God that hears prayers of many languages. Therefore, the Bible was not written by men, but translated by men, and men will hear the gospel of Christ and be changed. Have you read the way? Maybe the only way you know about God is by Christmas movies. Christmas movies does not lead men to repentance. It prepares men for Christmas Day. It prepares men to buy Christmas gifts and set up Christmas lights and set up Christmas trees. 
But when a man reads the word of God, they set you up to turn away from sin. Despite sin, for the God. Today is a day of salvation. And today we lift up the name of Jesus. Not the name of my church, but the name of Jesus. It is a name that is above every name. It is above King Charles the Ten. The name of Jesus. Friends, as I come to the end of this message, to let you know that there is only there is what we call the ABC need to receive eternal life. Eternal life is what God is given, not a religion. He didn't need men to become Jews. And so there are many people who want to be born in a Jewish family so they can inherit the blessings of Abraham. But do you know that you can be born to Christ and receive the blessing of eternal life? <laughs> dear Lord, dear grandma, man, the sign of the cross is something I'm going to preach about. But you see, we need the life of God. We need more than a Jewish life. We need more than an English life. We need more than a, a religious life. We need eternal life. Because I cannot go into the afterlife being an English, a Welsh, an African, an Asian, or an American. You are either a child of God or a child of the devil. You die a child of the devil or you die a child of God. That is the only identity you take in the afterlife. We can say that he rests in peace, but he's, he's dying in pieces. Love dancing with the devil national team because he gave you no call. Today is a day of salvation. Repent, repent, friends, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Today maybe you're looking for Jesus. You're looking for truth. So you're going to the university library. You're looking for truth. So you're going to water store. You're looking for truth. So you're practicing witchcraft. You're looking for truth. So you're practicing the traditions of your fathers. Friends, I'm here to let you know that truth is not found in paganism. It is not found in Islam. It is not found. Hallelujah. It is not found in all witchcraft practices. Because the Bible says all these witchcraft practices are an abomination. These are an abomination. And because of our abomination, we provoke God to jealousy and anger. Practicing the chromancy and Torah cards reading that's not leading to truth. It might tell you a part of your life that doesn't give you the power to fulfill it. But knowing about your future without receiving power to fulfill and bring it to pass is useless. You see, practicing witchcraft, Torah card reading, all the Naomians in this place, your time is short. And your days are now repent and believe in the Lord Jesus. I know that it's easy for us to practice witchcraft in Wales. That is a tradition from our fathers. But will it take you to heaven? Because witchcraft doesn't take men to heaven. It might give you a life and a connection with creation, but it doesn't connect you with the creator. Practicing enchantments and witchcraft spells might be able to manipulate the hearts and the minds of people, but they will not connect you to the Creator. Witchcraft has never connected men to the Creator, and that is what pagans believe in creation. They would rather protect the creation than the Creator. You see, Paul wrote the other day that men put the creation before the Creator. They turn the glory of the invisible God to the image of the corruptible man. They turn the image of the glorious God to the image of a stone. They worship stone. They put stones on hedges like a stone bled for them. You see, God did not send a stone to bleed for humanity. He sent his son. See, stones cannot become bread and stones cannot become human beings. Giving sacrifices to soul will not change your life. It will lead you to hell. Today, Judgment against all which are practice in this place to let you know you will be connected with creation but not the creator and the creator is coming he's coming to judge all evil practices he's coming to judge all divination the promise and all the masses that are practiced in this place the clavians will be brought to judgment for not obeying the commandments of the gospel that is against witchcraft and divination Today is a day 
Today is our grace. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus. Today is our day. Repent and believe in Jesus. You see, the witches might believe in Jesus, but they don't follow his purposes. They confess him as the one, the good God, the good kind of spirit, the Jesus spirit. But you see, you have been knowing about the Jesus spirit and not receiving the Jesus spirit in your life to change your life, your heart and mind is useless. Therefore, we come say, repent, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Some of us believe that you know what God made homosexuals and bisexuals. We believe that it's an offense to not be having a gender diversity. Our gender diversity is an account that detests the creation pattern of God. God did not make a man a woman and a woman a man. He said, let us make man in our own image and likeness and let them have dominion. In him created male, female. God's creation pattern was two genders. Not a gender confusion of diversities of genders. And now we've lost count. I've lost count of many genders. It was first for 72, but now we're multiplied. Men can become cats. Men can become dogs. But you see, the ideology of men cannot change the biology pattern of creation. Today is a day of salvation. Today I'm here to remind you the Bible declares that homosexuality is an abortion. It's in Leviticus 11:27. There's nothing we can do about it. God's opinions and patterns cannot be contested by humanity. We either obey or we reject it. And today we're here speaking the truth. That you will be saved. Because the truth hurts and the truth sets you free. Maybe you are out there calling the police. Say this guy is causing alarm and distress. But she according to British law. No Welsh law, but British law. It's not an offense to speak the truth. It is not a crime. It might offend you, but it's the truth. Check the social public is for the act. Today I come up to cause alarm and distress. But I come to bring the truth which is offensive. And accept your repent your life was spirit. Therefore, repent and believe in the Lord Jesus and you will be saved. Repent from your sins because life is not an eternity this morning. As I come to the end of my message, as I come to the end of my message, I'm here to let you know that the Lord Jesus will die and rose from the grave. <laughs> He's coming again. And that is the gospel. The gospel is not let's love one another. Even though love is good, but it's not the complete. The Bible says that shall love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. But some of us preach what is part of the truth. Let's love one another, but let's hate God. Let's love one another, but let's hate the commandments of God. But the Bible says the best and the greatest commandment. Is to love the Lord thy God with all thy heart and with all thy soul. That is the first and the second greatest commandment. Which means until we obey the first commandment, we cannot love one another. We cannot love one another. A man that doesn't care God will soon beat his wife. See, that is why we have many men, women beaten. We beat women because they don't fear God. See, when you have the fear of God beating a woman, Oh, uh, it's not part of you. When you love the Lord and God, hating your neighbor is not part of you. Because you take the love for God, the love of humanity, that God created. Today, it is a day of salvation. Repent and believe in the Lord Jesus, that you will be saved. Repent and call on his name. Repent and believe in the gospel. Maybe you are cool being a warlock. You've been a warlock all your life. But one day when you die as a warlock, not knowing Jesus, you will go to hell. The warlock has the of the dead. So calling on dead folks, gathering relics in the bones of the dead, invoking other spirits, which is not really the spirit of your ancestors, but a definite spirit from the pits of hell that have led the ways, the nature, and the characteristics of your dead ones. Today is a day of salvation. Repent from the necromancy and come to Jesus. 
come to Jesus. For he's the way, the truth, and the life. Today we come preaching to Moses that Jesus died for all Moses. See, the Moses knows Jesus as the Messiah in the Surah 325, but they rejected his messianic office and have accepted his prophetic message. But I don't understand. How can you call a man a prophet and yet reject his prophetic message that calls you to go to the Father? How ah, can you believe in a God that tells you that the people of the book had a revelation before me?